So empirical test construction is the last one. This method, you generate tons of questions. Tons. They don't have to be related to anything related to what you're trying to measure. Uh, the MMPI, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, uses this technique. It is the classic, classic example of empirical test construction. So what you do is you gather tons of questions and you administer them to people who are already divided into groups. These groups usually are like a clinical diagnosis or like in vocational interest inventories. They'll find people who are really happy and successful at their job versus like those that are at the job or just random people. Or no, I think it's that are at the job, either unsuccessful or unhappy or something like that. And they compare the answers across the groups and find the questions that distinguish the groups. Now, there are a lot of strong assumptions to this. It can be really problematic. Oh, look, sorry, let me back up. The basic assumption is that certain kinds of people, the people that you've grouped into these distinct categories, have distinctive ways of answering certain questions. And so all you have to do is find the questions that distinguish them. Now, okay, all you have to do is, is an understatement. That's the first step. You find the questions that distinguish and you cross-validate. Now, what is cross-validation? For the uh, machine learning folks in the room, it's one, one fold uh, cross. Oh, I'm blanking on the name right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's, it's essentially like two groups. And you do the study again. And so you determine if a test can actually predict whatever behavior or diagnosis or category of membership that you're interested in, in a new sample. So you make the groups again. Ideally, the exact same techniques you used the first time. And then you give the new groups the same questions. And you confirm that the questions that distinguish the old group also equally well distinguish the current group. Because you don't want it to be left to chance. And you don't even have to understand why a group will be distinguished by... So the schizophrenia versus not group, like one classic way they're distinguished is the preference for shower versus bath. And that has a really strong assumption because it's true that people in that group that the Minnesota folks used, the schizophrenic group, were more inclined to take showers than their control group of like healthy people. Their healthy people were primarily country folk. Just Minnesota farm boys is the anecdote that a lot of people use and the people with schizophrenia they were recruited from inner city hospitals in downtown twin cities now if we were in a classroom i would ask you to tell me why like why you think that is spoilers i'm gonna ruin it for you um but it's because farmers are more likely to take baths and city dwellers because they have baths and putting in a shower was more expensive in the 1940s, which is when the sample was collected, versus city dwellers who were more likely to live in close quarters and smaller places, so it was worth the, the cost of a shower for the landlord or whatever. So people who lived in cities also happened to be the ones that got treated in inner city clinics and the people they recruited were from the country so it was great it's distinguishing country folk from city folk less great for schizophrenia i mean it's not entirely this cut and dry but like it illustrates my point here so there are some really strong assumptions here that you should make sure to val like if you run this kind of test so, sure, those groups answered them distinctively, but what is causing them to answer that way? So, it's not based on theory. The book really hates on this method a lot. It ignores item content, details about lawsuits, and things like that. I like this method better than the book does. I don't love it, but I like it, because it's harder to fake. Because there are implications for ignoring the item content, because it doesn't matter. If it distinguishes, it's fantastic, and it's almost a point of pride. 
because the responses are difficult to fake because they don't know because it was never designed to match onto anything. So it's behavioral. So tests are only as good as the criteria by which they're developed and cross validated. So tests may not work all the time, like in another like place. So that's actually one reason why test development is constantly ongoing and why taking standardized tests is expensive. It feels like they're gutting you that, oh, it's the same test, but it's an ongoing process. And they're having to pay for people to like do these kinds of studies. And they're big and they're really expensive. So I get the griping on standardized tests, but like this is one of the reasons why it's expensive. So responses are difficult to fake. Tests are only as good as the criteria and context matters. They can cause problems with public relations and the law. People who take the test can be skeptical about whether it really measures what it's supposed to because it lacks face validity. It can also be super awkward, like if you're asked to testify before Congress because it doesn't like you there because the congressional people there will be like, why are you asking about showers or bath? That doesn't seem to be related. And then you have to explain all this like empirical test construction and they're like, but it doesn't look it. There's no like they won't say face validity, but that's essentially they're like, eh doesn't look like it measures it so why are we asking these questions and some of them are like super intrusive like about like homosexuality or like you're at the at the time like there was like major stigma that I mean, there still is but less so because the world has accepted that we're fabulous <laughs> sorry um so these problems can be in terms of just them looking weird and also with the law. So based on questions that can lead to discrimination, even if the test isn't used that way, like questions about religion, sexual preferences, those all fall in there. And uh, some companies, I think Target is one of them, had to pay a lawsuit for using a test that had all these types of things. So it can be a problem. And lastly, content validity. So the content of the test doesn't always match the content of what is trying to be predicted. And so this is often low with the empirical method. And so if you're trying to like re recover information or like make a new test from an empirical test, it's really hard because there's not like good stuff in there. It's just like random garbage that's useful for distinguishing, but it's not so helpful if you're like trying to make a new test out of old tests to like predict cool stuff now. Okay, last slide, I swear. Okay, so probably the best method, as is always the case, is a combination. This is kind of illustrated with Jackson's personality research form. It's an extensively researched and validated measure of normal personality, like an old school one. It was designed to yield scores of personality traits that were relevant to functioning individuals. Wide variety of situations. It was based on a lot to Murray's framework on describing personality. And we've got some links here that you can click in the uploaded slides. So here's the general approach that I like and kind of recommend. Uh, you generate items using the rational method. So like just essentially brainstorming them. Check theory, make sure you're like not missing chunks. Analyze those responses with factor analysis. And then cross validate, which is the empirical piece. So you correlate the factors that you've generated with independent criteria, and then you validate them by running in another, you run another study to see if the factors hold up. So that's all of assessment. Um, cool. I will, sorry, I rushed at the end, but um, I'm trying to get these videos up a little faster so that you can, get them all done or you know have flexibility um because i'm the bottleneck i will see you next time where we talk about kind of more of the ethics and kind of stuff related to that in assessment bye bye